Sorry, I forgot to open Docker. I'm using it. OK, so while I wait for my uh, computer to boot up and do things, um, I'm Ari. This is a terrible title for the talk I'm about to give. So let's uh, come back to the title. We'll rewrite it later. And before I forget, because I always do this, if I don't have a slide that tells me who I am, uh, I'm Ari. I'm a user pretty much everywhere. I write books. Uh, I live in San Francisco. And um, I, little, little known fact, I spent about 10 years as a professional comedian. Um, I'm not that funny. And that's my dog. <laughs> oh. She might have to have eye surgery on Friday. It makes me sad. OK, so um, uh, I am one of the main authors of these three books. Um, later, uh, oh, one of the cool things about the, those books, and also one of the most terrible things about those books, is that we keep them updated. Um, so uh, you can imagine the pain that we went through. Uh, all right, so before we get to rewriting the title, let's talk about uh, smarter web applications. Um, all right. OK, so in our world, I would argue that this is true for everybody here, or at least most everybody here. Um, definitely in my world, data really matters. There's data everywhere. We like we, we turn on CNN or the rough equivalent of what they have here in Spain, um, and people are always talking about big data, and they don't know what that means. But for us, what um, data? When I talk about data, what I mean is um, it's really important for me and my business that we know who our users are, where they're coming from, um, uh, how many, like how how engaged is our audience? Are they opening our emails? Are they clicking on the buttons? How long are they spending on our site? Where are they coming from? Um, the, what's the delta between today and last week or uh, last month or six months ago? Um, even Things like, it, does this content turn people off? This is, this is all stuff that really, that um, we look at and we look at pretty intensely. Um, the reason why we do that is because Data, although d data is really important to us, data doesn't mean anything unless there is uh, action that's associated with that data. So what we're really looking to do is say, is try to understand why, where our users are coming from um, and how we can optimize the time that we have with them, be it um, one page, um, they're opening one page and they're there for a second or they're a repeat uh, reader of our intensely um, amazingly awesome content-filled blog. Hint. <laughs> OK. Uh, but, it, but it doesn't matter, because the only thing that actually does matter is how, do, how, can, we, um, how can we engage our users to um, be more interactive with us. And that, that happens through action. So we like to look at what is actionable data. Today what we do is we open up our uh, we open up Google Analytics or we, our custom analytics machine. Uh, we generate, we manually generate these reports. We look at things like I listed before, are they clicking, like what buttons are they clicking on? Um, how far down on the page do they scroll? If they make it to the bottom, are they actually, uh, is there any correlation between if you scroll super far down to is there uh, uh, engagement the further down you go? Um, things like that. So then what we do is we'll take that, we'll take these uh, ideas, we'll wrap them up into, um, into concrete, into concrete, um, uh, com I guess, uh, components. That's, that's a weird way of saying that. Concrete code? Yeah, okay. Um, and then we'll deploy that, we'll test it, we'll put, you know, we'll run our A-B tests and see which, which button what color of the button or what call to action makes the most sense, what language makes the most sense, and then we'll deploy. Um, and hopefully things go up, and if they don't go up, then we do that whole thing over again. And meanwhile, we have a day job. It takes so long. 
I'm not the only one who experiences this slide as like serious pain, right? Okay. That leads to the question, maybe there's another way. We could, I don't know, hire a whole bunch of people, right? Super cheap. Use something like Mechanical Turk. Do you guys know what Mechanical Turk is? Mechanical Turk is a service that Amazon hosts that allows uh, you to hire actual people to do actual work. Um, so things like if you give them an, a whole bunch of images, identify well, if there are dogs in that image, and you can get people to do that. And they get like some number of cents per identification per photo. But that's really kind of a joke because we have machines, and machines can do this way better than we can. So um, today, rather than talk about data visualization, I don't have any idea why that um, I, we made that the title. Uh, we're going to talk kind of a little bit rough around the edges of machine learning. We're not really going to go too in depth. It's a little out of the scope to teach um, how to uh, do machine learning. However, in order to even get to that part, we're going to talk a about data science. So data science, I would argue, is exploring uh, data through the story of our users. What is, like, as I mentioned like four times already, like, what is the path that our users take and why are they taking that path? Um, that is an example of a story for us. So computers are really awesome at doing things that we are really terrible at, like pattern matching. They can, you can take a machine, you can run a whole bunch of data through that machine and they'll spot patterns that you may never see for yourself. For instance, in this talk, um, in preparing for this talk, our, I found out that we have a lot of people who are in Australia who click on our buttons and convert past midnight that I never would have seen that. That's crazy. Midnight. And that's adjusted for their time. It's not our time. That's, okay, anyway. Um, computers are really awesome at automating repetitive tasks like doing things like deployment or uh, user tracking. Um, and we can approach those problems algorithmically. Um, also, they're really fun at hosting LAN parties. Um, and like I said, humans, we're not so good at doing things consistently. We're not so good at doing things um, quickly. And we're definitely terrible at automating, um, especially telling jokes. <laughs> so I insist that we use computers to do the hard stuff, the stuff that we don't want to do, so we can do the fun stuff. You know, like <laughs> hang out in Barcelona. And maybe go to, was it Opium? Is that the name of the club? O the o Opium Club? Opium Bar. Opium Bar, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, I've gotten pretty far off topic here. Let's get back to actually angular beards. <laughs> that was not planned. Okay, wouldn't it rock? I think it would be really awesome if our applications could determine what to show uh, at the right time to the right users. I like to think that what this helps us do is maximize the conversion rate of our application. That's really, like, that's the goal of this talk. And I would, uh, again, argue that the goal for everyone here, everyone's professional career here, is to maximize user engagement. Um, also, uh, I want to minimize the amount of effort that I, that I expend on a daily basis. Um, don't tell this guy, because he's kind of a jerk. He's my boss. Okay, so I mentioned we were going to we rewrite the title. Let's do that now. Uh, the title really should have been Building Smart Angular Components with Machine Learning. That's better, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> It's more, yeah. So in order to accomplish this, um, I argue there's a couple steps. What we have to do is we will create our components. Um, we'll look at how our users are interacting with these components. And then we'll analyze that data. And we'll update the application uh, rendering. And um, well, up, update the application to match the user that is looking at our application by doing a little bit of prediction. So um, let's talk about 
uh, a component. Let's say that we have a landing page, and that landing page has a bunch of components on it. Um, and the components that we are really going to be interested in our uh, demo talk are the ones for a landing page. So we might have like a description of what this landing page is, what we're trying to, um, we're, what we're trying to promote, uh, some testimonials, have a sign-up box, and have maybe another sign-up box, maybe have like 30 testimonials that are, have like the scrolling sidebar, a little bit of call to action, um, uh, like special offers, maybe if they make it all the way to the bottom that we say, oh, we'll give you a free book. And really what matters, what, what matters for us is uh, in this demo specifically is what order those things show up for what user at what time on what continent and who is that person, right? Like maybe, maybe uh, teenage guys click on the call to action button at the top more than um, older nerdy white guys from Minnesota. That is such a weird segment to quote. <laughs> okay, in summertime. Okay. Um, so step two is I, in in this experiment is um, we want to set up an experiment to say uh, at what order should we show should we show our components? Um, where do people click and where do they leave? So in source code that will be opened after NG Europe, which is Tuesday, um, this is how you would do that in using this, using this tool set. Uh, you set up your experiment. For the time being, I've taken the experiment and I've shrunk it down to three components. Um, and basically what, we're, what we want to do is we want to uh, track our, we want, we want our application to kind of automate itself, right? Like, Depending on who, where the IP is coming from, who the, what the user agent is, maybe it's, um, uh, you know, maybe the um, uh, device is a mobile device running Opera browser. That's still around, right? Did I just date myself? Okay, thanks. Uh, all right, so that is, for instance, a demo, right? So we have these three components here. And we have uh, these three components. We have sign up, testimonials, and description. Um, in this somewhat relatively trivial demonstration, uh, I, let's say that we track our users based on where they click on our page. So they might come down to the description and they might click a whole bunch of times on the description because they want to approve it. Anyway, so uh, I promise it. This trivial example actually is um, pretty demonstrative of something that is more cool in just a minute. Anyway, so we set up our experiment, and then we're done, because our application will take care of itself. Hooray! So before we can actually call ourselves done, um, we, want this, we want the experiment to take care of collecting data about users. So. Um, and also the, the usage of the page. We want our components to maybe track scrolling. Maybe when our component renders, we want to track that, see how often this, this component uh, renders. Maybe there's some correlation between that and uh, how often somebody signs up and clicks and puts their email in. So like I said, uh, for the simple example, we're going to track those clicks and allow this to uh, determine what order our application renders in. Oh, that one, okay. So did a whole bunch of click in on these two. Noth you might be like, oh, nothing's happening. This demo is totally broken. Well, when you render a page, it would be really odd if the boxes just started moving because you were interacting with them. So it's static. However, when we come back to that, we'll see that it's no longer static. Oh man, I totally gave away the surprise. Okay, see, our description box has now become like the most important, uh, most important element on, in that landing page. And what we're doing is we're tracking our users' information there, right? So for this simple example, we have a click event. This is just normal Angular 2. If you've never used Angular 2, this is just normal Angular 2. If you have used it, you've probably seen something like this before. 
Um, the only thing that the only thing that we are doing is we're using the um, wrapped experiment uh, track function um, to track specific information about both about the user and about the goals of this experiment. Okay, so now I was really excited. I wanted to jump ahead and say, "Oh, sweet, our testimonials." They're no longer really important, but I like that box. I hope they, I hope they move up. Nope. Okay. Um, so what this does is this notifies our server, but I have we haven't even talked about a server yet. So the backend setup for this guy, um, in or not the backend, the full stack setup for this guy. This uh, this demo has on the front end Angular two because you know, we're at Angular beers, uh, and a little bit of custom JavaScript. In the back end, we're using kind of a lot of, a lot of technologies. We're using, uh, we're tying Google Analytics with our own custom back end analytics server, uh, using a little bit of Spark and uh, MongoDB to store our results, and some sweet Python. Whew. Okay. Before I talk about how it's powered, I just totally just like blew through a whole bunch of stuff. If there are any questions, you're more than welcome to raise your hand. Don't throw anything at me because I care about this computer. Okay. If you, oh, did you raise your, I looked down like I was like, okay, sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, this, so talking about exactly how machine learning, uh, the, the algorithms that we're using is slightly outside of the scope um, of this talk. However, if you're interested in it, please tweet at me. I'm a user. Or DM me on GitHub. Can you still do that? I, don't, I think they took that feature away. Or write me an email. Um, if you're interested in that, because I'm also really interested in teaching machine learning. Anyway. But, for the scope of this talk, um, let's skip over the gritty details of that and, uh, and talk just slightly a little bit higher level. Basically what we have right now is we have a front end that is hooking up to a back end where we are storing a bunch of uh, JavaScript events that our users, that are driven by our users. So like I said, maybe when our user scrolls down if we have a ton of people scrolling down and spending a lot of time on the testimonial box, that means that testimonial box is probably pretty important. So we want to capture, we want to capture that usage. And you can do things, you can do this with things like Google Analytics, which is why we tie into Google Analytics with this demo. Um, so the way that I like to think about this is that our front end is hooked up to our, is hooked up to our back end, uh, driven by user, user data. So what we want to do is we want to take all, uh, all those events, we want to take all our user data and uh, try to understand what's going on in, try to understand why, why and how that data is being generated. So what we can do is we can take, take that data and we can build a model that generates goals based on, um, uh, goals based on information that, about our users that we're trying to derive. Like, like I said, is that testimonial box pretty important? Maybe it is. Um, then we're running our uh, all these data, all these data points through uh, a little bit of logistic regression, so um, we can. Oh man, I totally just jumped ahead. I'm sorry. Before we do that, in the next slide we'll talk about that. Uh, what we want to do is we want to look at the features that we're really that we're interested in. Like what, like I said, where is the person? Where is our user coming from? Uh, at what time are they visiting us? Are they clicking on the right things? Are they not clicking on the right things? Are they clicking on the wrong things? Are they not clicking on the wrong things? I think I covered the clicking. <laughs> are they scrolling? How much time are they spending on the page? How much? When does this component? When does one component render over another component because the user is actually visiting it? We're doing lazy, lazy component rendering. Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff. There's a whole bunch of different features that we can take from the events that our users are generating and build a model around those to see uh, if, if there are patterns that, if there are patterns there that we can uh, 
we can dynamically render our application to capture and pr try to predict what the user is going to do when they land on our page. Um, so when we do that, what we do, what we get is a model for higher, higher user interactions. And what's really neat about this is before you serve the page, you can run, you can take that model and try to predict what your site should look like before you send it to the user based on a model that is uh, in the real time, hand wavy, real time, uh, being updated to try to reflect the user that is visiting your site at, the, at that moment. Wow, I took like all that fell out of my, all that fell out of my mouth. Let me try that again. This is the coolest part. This is like, imagine if like your application literally could rebuild itself for the person, could, pre could make a prediction, a maximizing prediction for you without you having to do any work. Thank you. Okay, so um, basically what we're doing is we're generating a predictive A-B test, a -B testing uh, based on user, uh, real-time user data. This is, the, this is the goal that I presented earlier. This, uh, our page will show the right information to the right user at the right time. Fancy. So imagine if we tracked other information. I mentioned a little bit like about scrolling. That's something that we do, we track. Um, if you could track, if you had a heat map of where your user, what your user was trying to click on, uh, and maybe you're tracking where their mouse is going, because maybe you're interested in knowing where they hover their mouse over. I can't, that's a bad example. It's the only one that's in my head right now. I need some more. Okay, cool. So uh, what I like to call this is self-conversion maximization. That's uh, the new buzzword. It'll be going around the street, I'm sure, next month. You know where it came from. Okay, so let's talk about the future of what, let's say that this experiment is successful. What does that mean? What is the corollary? What can we project in the future? So what I want to do right now, let's, let's take a trip. Six months in the future. <laughs> okay, come back. We're not going to go over there, although I'd really like to. I'm sure parts of Spain look like that. Um, so looking beyond the simple example, imagine if we have lots of applications, not just one application, not this, this silly, where do you click on, where does our user click on, and how does, that, uh, how does that reflect what our website looks like. Let's imagine for a moment that we have a bunch of components. We have a bunch of different landing pages. Let's say that we have some testimonial components that have three boxes, and you can scroll and see more testimonials. Or you have a, um, you have a sign-up box with a sign-up button that says put your email in here, and you have another sign-up box that has, um, uh, we'll send you a free something if you put your email in here. Uh, imagine if we have a whole bunch of apps doing this. If we could start, if we could collect components that actually are hooked up through these experiments, we could collect information about our users and which one of those components actually um, converts the best for any, some given type of website. For the time being, I'm gonna talk about our landing pages. We have ebook landing pages. Imagine if we had a whole bunch of components that we put on these ebook landing pages and we could tr collect information about how those specific components uh, uh, relate to user conversions, we could pretty much just shirk the entire responsibility of building applications and just write the content maybe of our application. Although I kind of argue that we might not even have to do that because you could do things like use natural language processing and just tell, throw a bunch of words at a computer and have it pop out a website 
meanwhile, we're hanging out in the coast of Spain with our friends. Okay. So, any questions? <laughs> uh, I'll answer the one that I know everyone's been asking. I quit doing comedy for an ex-girlfriend. Any more? Yeah, so this. Let's see. Oh, no, it didn't start. Oh, well, that's why. Oh, boy. Did I just launch that on Amazon? No, I didn't. Okay. Do you guys know what Jupiter is? So Jupiter is a, it's, what? Do you know what Jupiter is? Have you seen this page before? Ha, has she, does she know what Jupiter is? Do you need to go? I can. Uh, sorry, I found that fun. <laughs> okay, so uh, actually this isn't going to show the algorithm that I'm using. I have to open a bunch of Java files to do that. So before I, we, I can, if you, it's going to go up open source next week. So I can give you that then. Or I can also after this talk, unless everybody wants to see Java. God, I don't want to do that. Okay, so um, yes, so basically what, we're, what I'm doing in this really simple one user example is I'm taking those clicks and I'm storing geolocation, which for us right now is in one spot right here, uh, and um, conversion, conversion tracking. So if I'm clicking on one component, I'm counting that as a point towards one component and a negative point towards the other components. Um, so then I'm taking those features, the geo features, which are meaningless at this point, uh, and the conversion features, and I have a three-layer neural network, one hidden layer, an input layer, and an output layer, and I'm looking at which one of those components, I'm running lo some logistic regression with a uh, um, yeah, so with, as we were talking about before, running a little bit of logistic regression, um, doing back propagation to try to maximize, to see which one of those uh, bars, which one of these bars um, is more important than the other bar. And then I'm storing that, like I said, in MongoDB. Uh, actually, right now I'm storing it in SQLite, going to, in this, for this demo, because I broke or my Mongo earlier today in the GraphQL workshop. Um, but then I would store that in MongoDB, and then when this page loads, uh, I'm, rendering this from a, I'm rendering this page from a server that is pulling that information uh, and shoving that off to a really ugly directive. It's called the experiment directive right here, and then dynamically rendering dynamically rendering our components based on the recommendations that come back from our server. Oh, that's in Java. It's in Java. Well, our experiment, I have, I have one written in Python, which is our experiment one, and then uh, using deep learning for J in Java. In Scala, actually. Java's a little uglier. But then again, so is Scala. Poor JVM. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Hey, all right, tell people what Jupiter is. Tell them the answer, yes. What Jupiter is? 
Jupyter is a an environment for uh, running live code. Uh, it's a good point. So um, basically, what Jupyter? Oh no, I totally forgot. Basically, what Jupyter Jupyter gives us is the uh, ability to interact with, oftentimes interact with. Um, uh, sorry, let me um, really quickly install this. Haha. -ha. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, what Jupyter gives us is the ability to execute live running code against a, a VM. In this case, I'm using a Python VM, but we could just as easily use, there's a bunch of different VMs we could use. In this, in my notebook setup, I like using Lua, so we have Torch and Python 2 and 3. This is open source already. Hooray! Oh, oh, my bad. Okay. Hooray! Okay, so um, this data is not, this data is uh, randomly generated using Faker. Um, so we're probably gonna see a whole bunch of countries that don't make any sense, like East Gobi, Queenland. What is Iwa? Is that a site, is that a place? I guess it's in Tanzania. Okay. Okay, so this is a bunch of um, randomly generated, somewhat relatively correlated to our Google Analytics data. However, for um, uh, respects to my company, I'm not, I can't show that, sorry. But this is basically what we do when we look at our data, is we take, we take our Google Analytics data, we look at what components are, um, we look at what components are uh, being rendered the most and how many are getting positive goals and negative goals. In this, I'm not showing any negative goals, just showing positive goals. We can show negative ones if we want. Yeah, it looks like um, Fu Yen does not convert very well. Okay. Okay. So some things that we do with our data is we uh, will often like, we'll group it by time of day, see ya. We'll group it by time of day and location about where people are at. Um, you can see here, this is, this is all grouped by uh, uh, the, well, 2000, that's funny. Anyway, um, this is all grouped by the day. We can, we can do things like uh, geo, geo, group by latitude and longitude to say, are you in this particular, uh, are you in this particular corridor? Something that I find really interesting is uh, at what time of day are people, what time of day are people on average converting, uh, in the week converting on our site? So this would be, this is basically a chart of how we can look at something like that. Um, we can see for whatever reason in our randomly genera generated data set that Fridays at 11.30 at night actually have a pretty good conversion rate. Oh wow, I totally lied. Uh, Monday is, has a really awesome one. We can also look at like how many, this is another thing that we do oftentimes, is look at how many people convert, um, how many, uh, at what time of day for any given week are people converting, we can look at those raw numbers. You can see that, like right here. Okay, sorry, I get really excited about this. <laughs> okay, so really the, um, that is not the right coupon code. Um, so really this, really, uh, 
this talk is all about, or the, like the really exciting part about this is the fact that we can start, we can now start generating applications that are, because of the super powerful rendering engine, dynamic rendering en engine that Angular 2 offers us, especially with, um, it's, that's not the right coupon code. <laughs> that is also not the right coupon code. It's Angular beers. This one is no longer useful, sorry. Uh, what do I have to generate? Anyway, yeah, how cool is that? We could like build applications by not building applications, by just letting them build themselves. Holy cow. Okay, I'm really excited by it. It's going to go open source next week, so you guys can all get really excited by it too. And I have plans to hook it up also through React, so we can do the same thing. <laughs> That's me. That's me.